Hello everyone and welcome back to another beginner blender tutorial. Today I'm going to go over how you can use tools such as shade smooth and subdivision surface modifiers to make your meshes look a lot nicer. So I'll get straight into it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to press shift A on the keyboard. Under mesh I will click UV sphere. Now as you can see I've created this UV sphere but it's not very smooth, it looks kind of more like a disco ball. All I need to do is with the sphere selected, right click and left click shade smooth. Now you'll notice it's nice and smooth and there's no noticeable shading anomalies. I'll move, I'll move it along pressing G and X and now I'm going to create a cube by pressing Shift A, Mesh, Cube. Now if I right click and shade smooth this object, you'll notice that it goes really bizarre. So the cube is one of the objects that you won't want to shade smooth. So if I want to change this back, I'll just right click it again and press shade flat to revert it. I'll press G next to move it along. Now I'll press shift A again and this time I'll choose cone. Now I'll right click and press shade smooth and it does look better, but you can notice that the shading looks a little bit strange in some parts. Like when I go up here, Blender isn't quite sure how to calculate what's going on. So to fix that, all I need to do is come down to this object data properties. Then under normals, I'll tick this auto smooth box. And now you can see the shading is looking a lot more natural. I'll press G and X and move that along. Now I'll press shift A, create a mesh and we'll select cylinder. And for this one, we're going to do the same thing as we've done with the cone. We'll right click, shade smooth, shading anomaly will happen. So we'll just come under object data properties and turn on auto smooth. Sometimes when you use the auto smooth, it won't quite get a desired result. And you'll see as I as I change the value, it reverts it back to its original form with shade flat. And as I increase the value, it will change. So for more complex mesh, you might need to change the degrees of the auto smooth here. So make sure to keep that in mind. If I create another cylinder here by pressing shift A, mesh, cylinder, but this time in this drop down menu, I'm going to change the vertices to six. Now I'll press G and X and bring it out. Now what if I wanted to make this mesh look more like a cylinder? Well, all I would need to do is, first of all, right click and shade smooth, and you'll see those anomalies again. And when I press auto smooth, it'll be like it's shaded flat again, but the shade smooth will be important for later anyway. So I'll come over to modifier properties with the object selected, add modifier, and I'll select subdivision surface. Now you'll see it looks a little strange at first, so I'll keep it on Catmill Clark and I'll set it to two. And now I'm going to press tab, enter edit mode, then in face like mode, I'll select this face and then shift select this bottom face. Then under item in the toolbar, if you don't see it, just press N on the keyboard. Under mean crease, I'm going to set this value to one. Now if I press tab back into object mode, you can see this looks more cylindrical. And all I would need to do to turn it back into cylinder is just increase the number here under levels viewport and render. So now I've set it to free, it looks like a proper smooth cylinder. And because we've done that shade smooth, it'll look nice and smooth. So for our final example here, I'm now going to go over something a little bit more complex. So obviously I don't expect you to have anything like this, but this will be more for an example for yourself in the future. Here I have this hoodie mesh, and as you can see, it's really jagged. So the first thing I can do here is right click and press shade smooth. Already that's looking a lot better. Remember, I've turned on auto smooth already here, so this is with it off, and this is with it on. So very subtle difference. You might argue that having auto smooth off actually looks better for this mesh, but I'm putting it on because I'm going to add some modifiers on top of this. I'll come over to my modifier properties, and you can ignore this armature because that's for something else. I'm going to add a subdivision surface, and already this is looking a lot nicer. With meshes as big as this, I try to keep my levels viewport and render low, the higher this number is, the more processing power it's going to use on Blender, and also the longer render times and viewport times you will have. So make sure to keep that in mind. There's also a mode called Simple, which actually in this case looks quite nice. It seems to exaggerate the creases, and so I usually rock this on this particular mesh. But if you want to go for something a lot more smooth looking, you can use the Catmull Clark, and you can increase it as well if you want. But don't go overboard with this, because if you put it too high, then, like I said, it will use more processing power. When you're using the simple, keep in mind, sometimes when you increase it a bit too much, now it's, it's gone quite weird. You can see the individual faces there, and it's not a very nice look. So make sure to just keep that quite low for if you're using something like this. 
So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you all found it useful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I make more Blender tutorials in the future. Thank you all again and I'll see you in the next video.